Dr. for providing the opportunity. Uh, Dr. Lalit, I think my topic is, is the need for chemotherapy at all. Uh, uh, means is there more of an immunotherapy rather than uh, the observation versus chemotherapy. Am I right, Sachin? Yes, sir. So yes. basically, okay. For okay. wherever treatment is required, whether we can do it with chemo and uh, use the novel agents. So, so I, I don't think we are I'm going to talk on the observation. Yeah. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. No, no, no. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have moved uh, with the, like the other diseases, myeloma, AML. I think the CLL also has got exciting. Uh, when we started journey, the chlorambucil and uh, probably fludarabin, then the rituximab came in, then we used uh, alkylator, uh, the alkylator cyclophosphamide along with the fludarabin, and then we had FCR. Then uh, in 2000, we had abendamistin rituximab. And after 2014, we have uh, many molecules. We have a different mechanism action, and the majority of them are oral. So uh, we are in an exciting era. This is a treatment evolution which I have shown on this slide. Next slide, please. Uh, what is happening in uh, uh, treatment, the previous was the chemo immunotherapy era, where the, if you are a young and fit, is the FCR, and if you are an older adult, uh, either is a chlorobicil based combination or chlorobicil alone, or rituximab and bendamustin. In India, most of the people were getting treated with rituximab and bendamustin. So, probably very few with the FCR and uh, very few with the chlorobicil. The majority were treated with R bendamustin. Fortunately, the ebrutinib is available and is available at a very low cost. Now we are in a targeted therapy era. The FCR is still for the young, fit, mutated one, except that all others have been moved to the targeted therapies. What we should do in India, I'll come to that. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is, a, uh, I'll show you the few guidelines I will show. And if you go through this, uh, this proves my, uh, the, 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 what is my, um, topic, but I will come that I may not agree completely with this. If you see a very small section, if you are a younger IgV mutated, one of the options is FCR. Uh, and and the, if you do Ebrutinib is fine, if you do Avenetoclaxar, Demptinib is also fine. So apart from that, if you see all these zero, they all are targeted therapies. So the Western world has moved, apart from the very small group, they all have moved to the uh, to the targeted therapy. So the topic fits for the Western world. Whether this fits for our uh, patients, uh, I'll come to that. Next slide, please. This is NCCN guideline. So if you see a preferred regimens, even in a younger patients or the elderly patients, all are targeted therapy. So the none of the preferred therapy is the chemotherapy. So if we go by this, the Western countries have moved to the targeted therapies. Next slide. What we should do it, I think we should do the test. A very important, wherever you're going to treat it, these three tests, if we can get it done, we should have it. Fish for 17p deletion, very few people will have a P53 mutation. If we can do it, we should do it. Other, apart from the otherwise, uh, fish for 17p and IGVF mutation status, we should know because that will change the treatment algorithm. Uh, uh, I think these two tests are must. Uh, the third one is desirable. So if we have all these three, that will help us to uh, uh, target the treatment. Next slide, please. Young fit, next slide, please, who are FCR eligible. Who are FCR eligible? So say they write a 65 to 70. I will say, considering the all patients, even a younger one, 30, 30 40 are getting with the rituximab, I think at least below 55, someone is IgV mutated, must be treated with the FCR. Why? If you see at this pattern, there's a flat curve so the 50% of the patients who are IgV mutated will have a flattened cut over the 15 years. So 50% probably are cured if you give them FCR. So below 55, not many comorbidities. Uh, you can extend it to 60. Uh, in our scenario, with the IgV mutation, uh, muta uh, the mutated one must be treated with FCR. That's my opinion. Next slide, please. If you see a FCR and bendamustine, so whether we can use a bendamustine, this trial has definitely shown that bendamustine rituximab is inferior to FCR. So someone who is eligible for FCR, we should not be using the bendamustine rituximab, which has been proven is inferior to FCR. Next slide, please. This is a, this is a, this has changed the, all the preferred, uh, which says the FCR has not to be used is an ibrutinib and rituximab. Uh, if you see a three years progression free survival. And uh, uh, this has shown an overall survival benefit. The ibrutinib rituximab, though, is a no 
less CR, less MRD negativity, but the progression-free survival is significantly better than FCR and even the some, uh, small uh, difference in the overall survival. Next slide, please. What, what I'm trying to say you, but if you see IGVH mutation, unmutated, uh, what I'm talking is the 17P is out, the P53 is out. If the someone who is not 17P is not P53 mutated, has an IGVH unmutated, if you are a young patient, if you use a prevention, uh, can afford it, want to have a long-term treatment with the oral medication, can use abrutinib. Someone who is mutated, I think because of the flattening of the curve, I'll prefer a mutated young patient fit for the FCR, should be treated with FCR, because there's not much difference between FCR and uh, abrutinib. Next slide, please. And uh, I'll come back to this, but before that, I'll go back to the uh, to the elderly patients who are FCR eligible. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. This is a trial. Uh, every trial, the, the chlorambucil has been a poor arm. Everyone wants to have a FD approval. Just uh, do a trial with the chlorambucil and get approval. So this was a, a resonant trial, which definitely showed a significant difference in the progression-free survival and a significant difference in overall survival. Next slide, please. And if you see a brute name, if you are, uh, the most important is whether you are IGVH mutated or unmutated, if you are using a brute name, there is no demarcation. So if you are using a brute name, and if you, if you are whether mutated or unmuted, it does not make a big difference. Next slide, please. This shows you the five years follow-up, and there is a significant uh, difference in the overall survival in comparison to chloromycin. Next slide, please. Uh, the, then, uh, whether the R vendorostin is better, uh, uh, is equivalent to the ebrutinib. This was a trial which showed that the ebrutinib is ben, uh, better than vendorostin uh, rituximab. Next slide, please. Three arms, ebrutinib, ebrutinib with rituximab, and uh, uh, rituximab and vendorostin. This showed uh, two messages. Rituximab and vendorostin is inferior. If you are using ebrutinib, probably rituximab does not have a major role. If brutinib doesn't have, that doesn't mean that all the anti-CD20 antibodies will not have it, but if you are using a brutinib, probably rituximab is not required. Next slide, please. This is uh, because this uh, molecule also is available. And this is the trial, which was recent in ASH uh, 2019, uh, eclabrutinib uh, alone or uh, with obnitinib uh, is better than uh, 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 the obnitinib chlorambucil alone, uh, with a combination of chlorambucil. Next slide, please. And this is an overall survival difference between the two arms. Next slide, please. Where will you use the, the eclabrutinib? If you see there, there's not much difference in the toxicity profile, but if you talk to the expert, they probably say is uh, uh, the lesser, lesser uh, uh, your uh, cardiac events, probably where you are, uh, uh, the cost is not a problem, then you can use eclabrutinib uh, if you are concerned about the cardiac event. Next slide, please. Apart from this, uh, I, I don't see any major role of cyclobrutinib. So abrutinib, very impressive progression-free survival in first-line setting in a younger patient, as well as uh, in the elderly. But the major problem is the indefinitive therapy. What we have learned with the CML people, uh, we still see uh, many of the patients with the blast prices. If you have an indefinitive therapy, people uh, will be very compliant in the uh, first few years, and then they, they try to skip, and then they tend to skip that medicine and we don't get the outcome the way it has been described in the trial. The lower CR, 30% uh, in five years, and unlikely to have a MRD. Next slide, please. Uh, what is exciting in the first line therapy? The time-limited therapy we would like to have it is one to two years. Uh, we have a one molecule, it's venipiclase. Unfortunately, it's still not freely available. High CR rate and high MRD. Next slide, please. One of the exciting uh, uh, the trial is Vendoclax uh, obnutrizumab versus uh, chlorambucil obnutrizumab. Is the, this was a time-limited trial. Uh, the Vendoclax was used for 12 months, and then the subsequent follow-up so was there. So it's time-limited, had a high MRD, and a very good progression to survival. Next slide, please. If you see at the significantly higher uh, MRD rate, even with the chlorambucil, if you add obnutrizumab, you see a few of the CRs and uh, uh, MRD results. Next slide, please. This is shows you the overall survival, the progression uh, free survival uh, with the uh, obnitrizumab and ventoclax. Next slide, please. 
what i am trying to show you here is uh, that the, there are two either you have indefinite therapy with the ibrutinib versus venetoclax with the obnutrizumab the three year progression free survival in spite of using a one year of therapy is been a equal around 82% in the three years so at least uh, till the three years the both the, the both the, uh, the trial in spite of having a, a limited therapy probably the venetoclax is equal uh, venetoclax with the obnutrizumab is equivalent to the uh, the ibrutinib next slide please the long term the, the the lifelong therapy even the western countries are going to accept it so there is a, there are efforts for going for time limited therapies this venetoclax and obnutrizumab which has been tried in elderly probably will be tried in the younger patients also and there is a whether you can combine both the drugs uh, ibrutinib and venetoclax more mrd high mrd limited time of therapy and uh, more progression free survival next slide please this uh, has shown a very significant high uh, mrd rate uh, with the uh, with the uh, the combination of ibrutinib and venetoclax i don't think that's an option for us considering the venetoclax is not available even if we can try to get it it will be very expensive so so even the western world is looking for time limited therapy we also i will prefer to have a time limited therapy rather than having a continuous therapy but some people are willing for a continuous therapy we would like to uh, uh, continue ibrutinib has become acceptable and is become accept this accessible for us which is a good news next slide please uh, so, uh what i am trying to say is why not the the the, the, the issue is a uh, combine uh, the only targeted why not combine the targeted therapy with the chemotherapy try to achieve a flat line at least for the good risk group so you have a time limited therapy lesser side effect and whether you can have a cure rate you can have a 13 14 years of flat line that we can achieve so this is a md anderson trial where they have combined ibrutinib with fc rather not fcr is fcg so they have combined with the obnutrizumab we we cannot afford to do that whether we can have our own trial combining these two molecules uh, combining with the targeted therapy and this one and trying to achieve so they have given only rather than giving the six cycle of fcr they have given a three cycles of fcg and uh, ibrutinib for a time period the limited time and uh, so this looks lucrative unlimited combining the chemotherapy gives us a flat line and uh, uh, high mrd rate next slide please and this is not for the bad group this is for the good group so the young patient mutated uh, whether we can combine a targeted therapy with the chemotherapy achieving that flat line and uh, with a time limited therapy next slide please Uh, this they have compared with the various other combinations of fcr then the one trial from dana power is ifcr also they use the six cycles i will say reducing the some cycles and using ibrutinib with fcr probably is possible for us but we need to do a trial we don't do a trials we wait for the trials coming from western world probably we may not get enough uh, time limit the, the lo lower number of cycles with I ifcr next slide please So these are the pros and cons of the various types because of time limitation. I will not go through this. Next slide, please. Uh, there are a certain uh, advantages and disadvantages. There are certain differences in the responses with the uh, ibrutinib versus venetoclax. Uh, uh, I will not go through this. I think we all uh, are aware of it. Next slide, please. And there are very exciting this. So what we are saying are talking about targeted even the the control arms in the most of most of the trial have changed to the targeted therapy so slowly the chemotherapy is moving out of even a control arm so if you see a many trials even the control arm is a targeted therapy so i think the the majority of the people have moved to the targeted therapy that suits to the my topic but probably is still not relevant for us next slide please so i summarize it chemotherapy is still important for indian patients molecularly guided treatment should be encouraged so wherever is possible at least 17 p by fish and uh, igv mission should be done we should have our own trial sponsoring our needs as i said uh, we cannot afford to have ibrutinib obnutrizumab uh, very expensive drugs we, we, we probably have to have our combination uh, i will uh, say we should have our combination the combination of chemotherapy targeted therapy which looks to me as a promising thank you Thank you sir